they open the course after gold, they demonstrate what they've learned. And there are a lot of different things that you can do, and I'm gonna provide a, a few examples for you today. So for example, you could have the teachers just write a simple reflection. And so when they're writing the reflection, some of the different things that you can think about having them do is talk about why they chose this topic. So they went through, they seen all the offerings that were out there. Why specifically did they choose this one? Was it going to help them in, enhance what they're doing in the classroom, learn more about uh, a certain topic, those types of things. Um, they can talk about new knowledge or skills that they gained by going through your course how the new knowledge and skills can be applied in their classroom setting. So if they're doing something on student engagement and they're talking about how what they learned about student engagement they can apply to the classroom setting. Or how these um, new knowledge and skills will help benefit the students and increase their the student achievement. So if you have put something together on reading strategies, how this reading strategy is going to specifically help them improve student achievement. Or just simply identifying some things um, that they have to consider before they start implementing some of these things. They could also do a lesson plan where they submit a completed uh, lesson plan incorporating the, the new knowledge and skills that they learned. So if they're doing a lesson plan, some of the things that really do need to be in the lesson plan though, um, at the very minimum, you're talking about what the learning target is, lesson activities, differentiation that's used throughout the lesson, lesson closure, and then assessment. And then really specifically looking at that strategy and talking about how they're going to incorporate that new tool or strategy into that lesson. Those are some more straightforward ones that can be done. Um, the next couple ones I provided uh, some examples of what that would look like if teachers were demonstrating what they've learned. So when they're putting together, um, they might want to do something showing a learning activity that they're going to do based on something that they learned. So they develop an activity based on this new knowledge and then teachers submit the activity or a video of the students completing that, act, that activity. For example, maybe you put together a course on student engagement activities. And so for the teachers to demonstrate what they've learned, maybe you've given them four, five, six different types of student engagement activities that you could do in a classroom. And so the teacher would show that they've done something. So they picked one, they said, I want to have my students do a world cafe. And so they're going to provide maybe some of the documents that they're sharing with the students. And I gave just a, a short screenshot of something that I did with the World Cafe with my students to show them this is the scenario that they're getting. This is how it's applied in the classroom in a narrative that the uh, teachers would give. And then show some different things that this is what the kids are going to do while they're doing this activity. And then when I did this activity, I walked around and I took pictures of the students uh, participating in the activity. And the teachers could do this or they could have short video clips capturing some of the things that the students were saying while completing the activity. Uh, another way that they can demonstrate what they learned is through scenarios. So you could provide scenarios to the staff and have them reflect or identify a tool and explain. So the, the top one over here, so if you have or put together a course on student expectations, students could identify if high expectations are demonstrated and then reflect on it, uh, explain it. So for example, um, one of the scenarios might be telling students that they will get a bad grade if they don't do their homework. Does that reflect high expectations, yes or no? And then what would you do to show that you have high expectations when it comes to homework? And for the bottom one here, so if you have a course that you put together on parent communication, you could give a few scenarios to the participants and indicate how they would respond to the parents. So something that I did before, um, when I did uh, something like this, I had a bunch of different scenarios and then we talked about them. So this would be one of the scenarios. So looking at the second one here, so if you had someone that came in, um, 
you had a parent respond to you and it's like, I do not understand what is going on with your class. Brandon has an A or B in every class except yours. I would like to schedule a conference with you as soon as possible. And then how would the parent communicate back to the parent based on this situation? So give them a couple different situations and they reflect and talk about how they would respond to that situation. Those are just a couple of examples of how you could use scenarios. Um, another one would be your open-ended questions. So just given a, a simple set of questions that the teachers need to respond to and then they submit them to you or submit them to us. So when you're, for example, a couple open-ended questions are some of the things that we're going to do in this course, which is a series of questions and the teachers kind of reflect and talk about that process. So like for example, this first one up here is like, describe any confusion or obstacles you may face following the Teacher Learning Academy guidelines. And so then the teachers would just respond to that, showing that they've gone through that course and looking at some of those different things and how it would be a challenge for them or an obstacle to put something like this together. And then another one is simply just creating a quiz in Schoology and have the teachers take it and get a score of 80 or higher. These are just a couple of examples of how staff could demonstrate what they've learned by going through your course. This is not intended to say that these are the only choices, just wanted to give you some examples so when we're moving forward, you have some different types of ideas that you could use. A couple of things to consider when you're putting together your course and you're thinking about the demonstration of uh, what the staff learned. You want to think about how long it's going to take the staff to complete the evidence of learning. So if you are developing a course that is for one CEU, it should not take the staff more than one hour to complete the course and the evidence of learning portion. So if you put together a course and it's gonna take about 55 minutes for the teachers to go through all those activities, you have about five minutes left for the evidence of learning. So that, in that case, you might want to go with a simple quiz. So if you have something that maybe only takes 35, 40, 45 minutes, maybe that's the one where you're gonna have more of a reflection for the teachers since it's gonna take them a little bit longer to put that together. Best practice is to give staff at least two options to complete um, to demonstrate what they've learned. So in, in this course, there are going to be two choices for you to show that you've gone through the course and you understand everything that's going on, and they're listed in there as two different options that you can complete. And it's just best practice to really give um, all the participants two different choices that they complete. Some other things to consider. It is only your responsibility to develop the course and the resources. Beyond that, you're really done with it. You're not responsible for providing feedback to teachers. This will be the responsibility of the staff development coordinator and the digital learning coordinator. So when you put these things together and they have their evidence of learning and they submit it, if there are questions or confusions in there, those will be handled by the staff development coordinator um, and or the digital learning coordinator. <clears throat> if teachers have questions about material that they are learning, you can include your contact information and have them contact you or you can have them directly contact the staff development coordinator and the digital learning coordinator. If there are technology issues as well as errors that are in the course, those will be addressed by the staff development coordinator and or the, during the during digital learning coordinator. The idea is that you've gone through and you spent the time and you're putting this together and then after that your responsibilities are really done. Your responsibility is really just to put together the course for teachers because we don't know how many hours beyond that that will take so we're going to shift all those responsibilities over to the digital learning coordinator and the staff development coordinator. 
So one of the things that you may want to include because some questions may come up about CEUs since teachers who take all of these courses will be able to get a CEU. So after the evidence of learning has been reviewed by the staff development coordinator, that person will then submit the request to the director of teaching and learning to grant a CEU for completion of the course. So you might want to include that since this may be a question about the CEU when they get it. So it's really after they've submitted the evidence of learning then the staff development coordinator will inform the director of teaching and learning and then she will send out that CEU information to the teachers.